Good morning, good morning. Was I on when I did that? Good morning. Good morning. morning. How are all you happy people doing? Hey, y'all had a good week? Anybody had a bad week? Good, that's what I'm talking about. No bad weeks allowed. <laughs> um, <coughs> okay. Um, what? I know you've been struggling, but it's, I'm just going to barely make it. No, we don't do that. <laughs> I, I, want, I want to focus on the positive. So even if there's hiccups and glitches, you know, skim over those, acknowledge that they're there if you need to, and then focus on the, the positive. I had somebody tell me one time, um, you just want to look through, every, through rose glasses for everything. I'm like, and why is that so bad? I mean, you, you make that seem like it's... it's Terrible thing, but anyway, so prayer, huh? What do you mean? No, I'm not hearing anything. Okay, you're yelling at us. Um, so prayer requests and praise reports. Anybody got any? Let's uh, go with prayer request. Well, my friend Jay. Jay, okay. And Dr. Greg. And Dr. Greg. Still hanging on. Okay. Oh. So you played bridge online? Uh-huh. Isn't technology awesome? And I have a praise report. Okay. I was, <coughs> I very rarely pull across two lanes at 24 West Sherman. And I was in a hurry, and I looked up, didn't see a car, and I pulled out, and there is a car, and I swear God just took me in my arms. How about Thank you, Jesus. And it, and the other driver was a good driver and that I have sent her what to do. But this was a, a miracle. So a praise report for protection uh, yes. while on the road. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Yes. So me and Jennifer are going to be doing a lot of traveling next week, so pray for the travel. Okay, so pray for lots of traveling. Um, they will actually be, well, we all are going to Tennessee um, to see um, my nephew graduate, our nephew, their cousin. <coughs> Letting you have, share him a little bit. And uh, so they're going to be, we're going to be driving a couple of vehicles. And anyway, we'll go drive uh, to Tennessee. And then, then they're going to, uh, a group's going, I guess that's okay to say what y'all doing? Okay. Oh, I could just stop right there. <laughs> uh, they're going, Orlando, is that where y'all going? <coughs> Uh, a friend uh, is graduating, and for his senior, um, a senior trip, he wants uh, his group of friends. There's what, like eight of y'all going? So, yeah, um, big groups going. So, safe travels. They're taking two vehicles to go to Florida as well. So, there'll be two groups of them um, traveling that way. So, um, <clears throat> lift them up in prayers for safe travel. They're back. Anybody else? So, how about prayer, uh, praise reports? Anybody online too, Jason? Comment. Oh yeah. Um, I think my renter got her job. Yay! She was fired from Sam to keep her dad and me that had even fired her before. Oh goodness. <laughs> Oh, good, good. Yes, yeah, I remember you telling us, I mean, because we were lifting her up in prayer uh, for about looking for a job, so that's answer prayer, too. Praise, yes. Joseph, Michael, family, and lost ones. Um, everybody got lost family members they want to lift up and friends? Yep, let's lift those up. Um um, I just want to thank the Lord for the, the weather and the gardening that I've been able to do. Um, things are going um, good, good with my mom. We're still not, we not walking, sitting up or anything like that yet, so it's still, you know, all that. But we're, wor- we're working out the kinks, you know, we're figuring out what we can do and what we can't do and how to live with the uh, uh, new 
uh, change in, in scenery, more or less. So, <clears throat> um, God is good. He'll give you, um, he'll, he'll uh, give you peace. Most people look at it and think, you know, how are you having, how, why are you smiling? Yes. Um, it's kind of an old picture point, but how do you fix that? Just I was talking to my brother about um, church hunting and stuff like that, and he was just like looking for churches. He was talking to a bunch of them, and I was like, honestly, when I was trying to like look for a church, I felt like in comparison to him, I didn't know anything about it. Like, most of the people here don't even know where they are, and it's like, I didn't hardly look. Um, and I said, well, to be honest, I wasn't really looking because after the first few, I was like, well, I actually don't want to look for a church anymore, so I'll just find me a church that I know and I'll look for one. He's like, not this one. <laughs> I feel like I just got super disheartened. Yeah. And he's like, how did that go? I'm like, I mean, he found me one. I didn't have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't really worried about it, but I just thought that was kind of cool because, I don't know, that was something that I, I know a lot of people So you, you put you put out there, God, this is what I'm looking for, mm-hmm. and and then He brought it to you. Yeah. You're special. So don't hesitate to ask God what you what you. I mean, He knows already what we need, but just tell God, I you know I would like to. If you're looking for a church, I'd like to find a church. Um, you know that X, Y, and Z. Now, be careful not to put them in a box, but um, there's. Can I use your example because you shared it with us? Okay. So Jean was like, we didn't know I hadn't met her. She was actually had prayed and asked God, God, I want to be part of a small home church, you know, that believes in deliverance. Okay. So when, that <laughs> how do you find, how do you find a home church? I mean, you know, I, I could see, I guess, stumbling up maybe on, on, but there's so much that pops up online most of the time. Don't forget my tallies, honey. Most of the time, I think you would skim by unless, you know. Um, but anyway, bring the big, the big group of friends, you know, and Brandon got to talking. See, this is why it's important. Don't hesitate to tell God, tell what God's done for you um, because you don't know. I mean, like, you know, y'all can just stop me if I'm <laughs> <laughs> saying too much. But, I mean, like, you know, God put two friends together at that time. More than friends now, but anyway. You know, and so, and, and just, you know, sometimes you're hesitant and I'll just, just be spirit-led and, and get to talking about things that you believe in the Bible and stuff. And you believe that too? Wow, you know, we got that in common. And, you know, from there, things just bloom. Yes. Amen to that. Amen to that. When he provides so well, it is humbling. There's a red truck. Is that Teresa? Uh, she was going to be late, late. She ain't that late. Um, that's exciting. <clears throat> but um, anyway, when God puts people in your path, you know, uh, when he blesses you, you know, he blesses you so that you can pour out. He pours into you. He, you we need to be poured into. But he blesses us so that, that we can get so um, don't get to the point where you get blessed and you you kind of hoard your blessings, you know. Give them back out, you know. And, and, and that's not just monetary blessings, which that is monetary bless is a blessing too. But, you know, your time, your, your love, your grace, your patience, pour that back out because God sure enough pours that into us. I mean, you know, we've been talking, this is week three, um, on love, and we're going to continue going because the more I read it, it's like God puts me in situations, and I'm going to give a testimony. <clears throat> well, it's not a testimony. It's technically a prayer request for a person, and the, um, we'll, we'll get into that when we, after we get done praying. But anyway, any other praise requests, prayer report, or prayer requests, praise reports? Yeah, okay. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for all those that made it. Thank you for safe travel and getting everyone here, God. We lift up all those that are sick, Lord. Every name that was mentioned, um, and I, I don't even want to start naming them, Lord, because I'm going to leave somebody out, and I don't want to do that. So I just, right now, I lift up everyone that's sick, everyone that's been in the hospital, everyone that's fighting with cancer, everyone that's looking for a job, Lord. 
uh, everyone that's struggling with unforgiveness, Lord, everyone that is just don't know you, Lord, and that you're trying, you're trying to get their attention, God. I just lost family members. Keep drawing them, Lord. Don't give up on them. Just keep pulling them and drawing them to you, God. We just we thank you for all the the mercy and all the grace and all the glory and all the goodness that you bestow upon us. God, just thank you for where you pour out and pour into us. God, help us not not neglect realizing that that is from you, that is of you, and that you have a purpose. And it's not just all about us, but it's about those that we can reach uh, with your help, Lord. We love you. We thank you for what you're going to do. We ask that you just um, speak to us today. We bind all strong men, every demonic entity that would try to steal what you would have for each of one of us. Um, Lord, we, we bind it right now in the name of Jesus. You cannot steal what God has for us today. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, <clears throat> what's the, the greatest commandment in the Bible? To love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. That is the first commandment. What is the second commandment? Love thy neighbor as thyself. So, um, having said that, that's why we're still talking about love. God keeps, you know, um, putting it on my heart. And so, I hope you're not getting tired of, of talking about it. But if it's the first and the second commandment, we need to be talking about it. We need to do self-examination. Are we displaying it? Are we showing it? Are we, um, it, you can feel it in your heart and not show it with your, your language and your body language, your, your outward expression. And then you can go through the pretense and show it, hey, Teresa. You can go through the pretense and show it with your outward expression and not really mean it in your heart. So it, it's very important since it's the first two commandments it is very important that we self-examine, and are we, are we exhibiting that? Um, so, uh, love like Jesus. By this, they will know. Um, so, this is how they will know you. Um, lesson three. <laughs> um, okay. Occasionally, an entire hillside. Um, Jason, can you pull up the picture of the green stuff? Anybody ever heard uh, uh, of kudzu? Yeah. Kudzu. Okay. So. Um, this is this is kudzu, and um, so occasionally an entire hillside in the Appalachian forest can be buried under an unbroken sea of brilliant green leaves. That's because kudzu, a vine originally planted in the area as an ornamental ground covering, can take over acres of woodland, suffocating color beneath its shade. Kudzu is a group of climbing, coiling, trailing. Perennial vines native to much of East Asia, South Asia, and some Pacific Islands, but invasive in many parts of the world, primarily North America. Uh, we can behave like kudzu without even realizing it. We can be so focused on our own interests that we overwhelm and diminish those around us. And so, um, you ever been on a drive and you see, and I think it's beautiful, and you know, until I was reading this and stuff, didn't think about the invasive aspect of it. Because I think it's beautiful. I mean, like you see these little lull areas on the side of the road, and then the you, and so it 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 will take up and suffocate anything. And, I mean, it kills trees because um, <coughs> it uh, shades the sunlight. <coughs> um, and, and I just you know we can behave like kudzu without even realizing it. Um, how many times have we become so? And this isn't to beat you up. This is an opportunity to self-examine. How can I improve? It's not a beat up, so d don't look at it like the devil wants to beat you up. God wants to show you and instruct you and teach you. So if you're being beat up, that's of the devil. That's not of God. But if you're feeling convicted, then you repent, and then you move forward. And God, help me not to continue to be like this. Teach me. Show me how I can be better. So don't, beat your, don't let the devil beat you up. Jesus prayed for Christians to live in unity, but unity is not the same as uniformity. We're meant to be like a beautiful forest, fully, uh, full of vitality and not suffering a blanket of identical leaves. So when you see this stuff on the side road, it is, I mean, like, I think it's, I mean, like, I think it's beautiful, but if you look at it, it's, it's all, it's just a big blanket of the exact same thing. That's not how we're supposed to be. That's, as Christians, that's, 
not what the body of Christ is supposed to look like. There's variation and there's purpose. You know, the Bible talks about that not everyone can be, you know, the, the eye. Not everybody can be the hand. Not everybody can be the foot. You, because if everybody's the foot or the head, whatever part of the body you want to name, if everybody's that same thing, then how can the rest of the body function? It can't. You've got to have the whole body. Um, uh, unity is fundamental in our call to love one another with one mind and one purpose. Unity is a word that is often misunderstood. Some people consider unity to mean oneness that results in being the same, while others think it means the absence of diversity. Scripture, however, paints a different picture of unity. In John 17, Jesus prayed beautifully, Jesus' prayer beautifully demonstrates the deep communion he shares with God the Father, and his main concern was for unity among God's people. Jesus prayers that all uh, Jesus prays that all believers will become unified is not just a spiritual unity, but one that clearly demonstrates and uh, is visible to the world as a powerful witness to the reality of God's love. The reality of God's love. I am getting tongue twisted this morning. I'm sorry. So, um, did I put it in here? Yes. So, it's, I'm going to read John 17, 20 through 23. This is Jesus' prayer that demonstrates his communion, he, the communion he shares with God the Father. And that's John 17, 20 through 23. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you love me. How many times, you know, <clears throat> and, you know, um, there's so many different directions that you can you can take this. But I think about, Jason actually sent me a video and was wanting me to watch it this morning. I'm like, it's not really relevant to this morning. It's awesome. And, you know, I want to think about it and all. But it does kind of tie into this um, a little bit. Because, and it's talking about um, different churches or groups or whatever. And... <clears throat> We are to love one another in spite of one another. We are to love each other for our differences and in spite of our differences. And some of the differences are not pretty. Some of them are a hard pill to swallow, per se. Um, I, I know in, in, <laughs> I know in, <clears throat> in, in our walk, you know, over the last five, eight years, you know, in two different churches and stuff, there have been people that it's like, oh, my goodness, can't take much of them because they just kind of get on your nerves. They just rub you the wrong way. And it's, it's not necessarily that they're trying to be, uh, and this isn't someone that's evil. This is just people's little persnickety personalities that we don't like. Um, now, there are some that, you know, yes, yes. No, that, that awesome. That is all. Yeah. That's important. Well, even like husband and wives, or uh, parents and children. Children, you think you 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 um, your parents get on your nerves, you get on their nerves too, <laughs> and vice versa. You know, but you don't stop loving somebody because you know he leaves the toilet seat up every time. And he knows I fell in it that one time. And, you know, I mean, like, you know, I have not fallen in the toilet. <laughs> so, but, you know, I, I've heard of people doing that. I mean, you know, and so you, you get aggravated with them, and it's, uh, it's okay. Is it, but, you know, are they doing it to be spiteful? No. Okay. If they're not doing it to be spiteful, you give them mercy. You give them grace. You kind of keep working with them. And if you're the one doing whatever it is, you know, <clears throat> and you can, it, you have it within your power to try to, to help it, 
then you work on that. But the whole point is you don't stop loving them because they do something that irritates you. And it's the same way in the body of Christ. When there's people, you know, um, and, and maybe I need to use myself as an example instead of others toward me, but, you know, <clears throat> I can't think of anything right now. <laughs> anything that I can first say that, you know, um, it, it, well, no, but I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. Somebody would have to give me an example of something that, you know. Um, Mom, Dad, we yes. have three children, they're all different. Okay. And you love them all, don't you? God yeah, loves God. us. What you're talking about really is you can love the person but not their behavior. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Like, like I said before, it's the mother of a murderer. She still loves her son, but she doesn't approve of what he did. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. That's right. That's right. He, he's... Right. Some people, if, if I do you wrong for some reason, you should hate me. And, and don't yeah. realize that I have a problem. You know, and they think that you don't love me any less. That's right. That's right. That's I did a, something awful. Um, the video that I watched this morning was talking about when you leave a church and if, you know, you kind of disowned because you left or whatever. We're called to love. We are called to love. And we are supposed to even love those. I mean, I even talked on the, in the uh, video about, you know, if, if a church or whatever is telling you you can't associate with your lost or unsaved family, you know, that, um, that you're not supposed to have any dealings with them and stuff. That how can you show love to people if you isolate people? If, you, if, 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 if they don't believe like you do, and it, you know, you, it's our responsibility. It is our responsibility to have a relationship with God and Jesus. It's our responsibility to formulate that and to grow it. Now, he, he draws us. I'm, I'm not getting into that point, but that is our responsibility. Our responsibility is to love those even when they're not there yet because you don't know that the love that you share to them might get them where they need to be. Um, I was talking to someone and had a falling out with a family member. Oh, families, families, families. <laughs> and can't see eye to eye, don't want to be in the same, don't want each other in each other's house. And, you know, my comment was, I said, you know, well, we're Christians. And I got that, yeah, I know. I'm like, well, the Bible teaches, and, and this person is not a Christian at all. And I said, well, the Bible teaches that we are to love one another. And, you know, I know, I know. I was like, well, you have to demonstrate love well but they did this it doesn't matter what they did are you demonstrating love now this is a secular person so i don't hold them in my mind to a, a christian that I, I just tell them our belief you know um they know what you know what all we do and stuff but sometimes you have to drop little seeds at the times and let god do what he does with it and you don't i mean it's so but you know, we're to love because if if we can't stand up and be the bigger woman or the bigger man and show love first, then, then I mean, like, do we have love? I mean, if, if the greatest commandment is to love God and the second is to love, uh, love your uh, neighbor, I mean, okay, it's very easy for someone to take that and you're supposed to love your brothers and sisters in Christ. That, that sounds nice, don't it? Sounds nice. But that's not what it says. It says to love your neighbor. It doesn't say your Christian neighbor. It doesn't say you're saved. It doesn't say your church member family. It says your neighbor. Your neighbors are hellions sometimes. I mean, they they lay on a highway to hell faster than than they that you can blink your eye. And so we're to love them. If you don't show, if we don't show love to them, good morning, good morning. If we don't show love to them, 
then are we truly Christians? Jason says he would say no. I, um, I, I, you know, um, th- there's that saying that, you know, it's what, what have you gained by loving someone that loves you? That's easy. Someone that loves you and dotes on you and tells you how much that they appreciate you and love you. And, and is that hard to love that person? So you haven't, I mean, I'm not saying not to love them, <laughs> but you haven't gained anything in, in the kingdom of God. You haven't put yourself out there. But if you, um, if, if they don't like you, if they complain about you, if they throw off on you, if they've hurt your feelings, and, and that's the ones you're, you're, God, I need you to help me love them. I'm struggling. There's nothing wrong to say, it, you know, I'm struggling to like them. I'm struggling to love them. You don't have to agree with everything that they do, and they can still have little traits that you don't, you know, as husband and wives, for those that are married, how many of you um, have a spouse or had a spouse and there's things that they did that just infuriated you? You just kind of overlooked it because it's like you know you do stuff that irritates them just as bad as they do stuff that irritates them. It's not a personal thing. It's just, it's just that's how we are and we're supposed to be as Christians. So, you know, and to me, it's easier to... And, and this goes, jumps out to the love thy neighbor. I find it easier to um, love non-Christians that are ugly than Christians that are ugly. Not in appearance, but in attitude. <laughs> Clarifying that in case anybody <laughs> wants. You know, because, I mean, you expect more from Christians, but they're still people too. And we can think people are saved and we can think that they're Christians, but you really don't know where they're at with God. And nobody knows that but them and God. So even the Christians that mistreat you, we're to love them and pray for them. Okay. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, I liked, um, I think it might have been last week we talked about it. I delete the notes from previous weeks to keep from having 20 pages of notes up here. But I, I think we talked about, you know, um, <clears throat> that it's, um, I lost my thought that quick. No, actually I was feeding on what you said. I was going to comment on what you said. Uh, it, it's out of there. Okay, well, when it comes back, I'll, I'll, I'll say it. Um, although unity calls for individuals to come together as one, the desired result for unity isn't a call to sameness. It's a call to share the same purpose, goal, and vision. When you have the same purpose, goal, and vision, husband and wife, um, siblings, we talked about siblings working together last week. When you have the same goal and purpose, you can accomplish monumental things. Um, that normally you couldn't. Um, you overlook your differences. You, 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 and that, that's, that is our goal with Christianity. Overlook the differences. Don't focus on them. Because if you focus on them, you miss the big picture. And that, the, that's a distraction. It's a distraction when you focus on the little things that irritate you or the little differences that you don't like or the little personality traits that we don't like or that they've offended you and you, they didn't ask for an apology. Well, who are you to wait on them for an apology? You could wait till they're dead, and you're dead, and then you still never get the apology. And so you're sitting there waiting on that. You're wasting precious time. It is a distraction. As we consider what it means to love one another in unity, we remember, uh, we are reminded that we are created to do life together as community. As a follower of Jesus, your overreaching purpose is to love God and his people. Your love for God and others, combined with the same from other believers, unifies us in Christ and declares that tr- the transforming power of his love to the world. Um, and we can't say it enough. Think about somebody in your life that you find it very hard to love. And then this upcoming week, pray for them. Pray for yourself for them. God, show me how to love them like you love them. Show me how to see them through your eyes because 
we do things, Jason said earlier, we do things that infuriate people. I do it. I know I do. Um, nobody's exempt. There's things that just irritate, maybe not infuriate. Maybe we're not to that level, but maybe so. But there's things that irritate people. So if we know that, that um, we have potential for irritating people, it helps to realize when people irritate us. It's just, it's just a personality, and it's okay. If you start loving them and you start having the same goal and the same purpose, and your, your whole goal is to go out there and witness, to go out there and show the love of Christ, to go out there and love on people, and that is your goal and that is your focus, the little differences that they do, you just bypass. It just, it, you don't even seem to notice it. It's kind of like focusing on the negative in your life or the positive. You can, you can focus on my car broke down, I got a water leak in the house, family member's sick. You, know, you can focus on all this stuff, but what did God do good for you? You know, there's a family member getting better, the, the leak in the house getting fixed, the car is, you know, somebody's loaning you a car, whatever. You can find the positive if you want to, but you, you can overlook it too if you want to. Um, so questions to reflect on. When was the last time you felt a deep sense of community or unity with others? I will just say, I mean, we don't have give examples if you don't want to, but I just, I, I love our church family. I mean, I just, um, it is a blessing. It is um, because we are like-minded. Uh, we're all different. We all have different interests, different things that we focus on, different things that we do. Um, but the Bible says not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together and that iron sharpens iron. Um, it is, it's a blessing to be able to come together. I mean, I, I hope I never uh, neglect to realize that. Um, and the second question, how can you begin to change your thinking from me-focused to we-focused? Anybody got any you got to get out of yourself. Amen to that. Is that easy? Sometimes it is, sometimes not. Like, some people just kind of do that. Mm -hmm. Other people can see the value in it. But if you're kind of losing your tunnel vision, you get to look at the side of the road. That's right. If you're a tunnel vision person, you have to begin to look at the side of the road. Um, I think a good way to, to get out of me focused versus and start being more we focused is pray to God like you normally do. And listen, really sit back and listen to your prayers. Where's the focus of your prayers? Now, I'm not saying that you're praying wrong or anything. I'm just saying because um, I've done it. So I feel like if I've done it, other people have done it. But sometimes I'll be praying and it, it's, you know, I thank him for what he's done, you know, but it's me. Thank him for what all he's done for me or our family. Uh, and then, you know, prayer requests for, for me. And that's, that's not a bad thing. But who in my prayer am I praying in their, on their behalf to God? So when we name these prayer requests, you know, try. Try to remember, you know, um, Dr. Greg, uh, you, know, um, you know, lost family members, brother. You know, as people are naming different things, and when God brings that back to your memory and you're having your quiet time, it's very easy because we know us. We know what we need, what we want, you know. But step back and let's, God, show me somebody and show me somebody that you need me to pray for. Put them on my heart and my mind. And then lift them up. And um, we were having a discussion the other day about praying in English versus praying in tongues. And, you know, you don't know what they need. But you ask God to put them on your heart. So, Lord, I don't know what this person needs, but I'm going to lift them up in, in, my, in my prayer language. Um, that the Holy Spirit that's in me can pray with the perfect prayer for what they need. And, um, and then you just start lifting them up in tongues. You know, um, I like to pray a little bit in English and then go into tongues. But there's what, however God leads you. Be spirit-led. And then the third question for reflection is, what areas in your life does God want to grow and mature you better to reflect unity that glorifies him? So when there's someone we're struggling to get along with, I think about the conversation I had just recently. 
um, about the two people not getting along, not wanting each other. Now, they're secular, both of them. Uh, one, one says that they don't believe like us, and the other one doesn't want to really talk about that aspect. So very much secular, not Christians and all. But what they can show somebody has to break the ice. Somebody has to be the adult in the situation, and someone has to say, I love you. I don't agree with the way you behaved or what you did. I don't like it, but I still love you. Because when we take someone's actions and we play, withhold our love from them because of their behavior, we're not showing, we're not showing Christ-like behavior. So, any comments or questions? What if they don't respond? That's a really good question. Um, have you ever told someone, I'm sorry? Well, I, I, I just, I'm still mad at you. I don't forgive you. You ever had anybody tell you that? Maybe. Okay. I think even if it's siblings growing up, you know, you tick them off and then they're like, you apologize and they're so mad they don't want to forgive you. That's on them. Our job is to re repent and ask for forgiveness to God and them. And then it's on them how they handle it. And so, like, if you were mad at me because I'd done something horrific to you, and I went, Teresa, I am so sorry. And you're like, I don't want to ever talk to you again. Well, I just want you to know I love you. I'm sorry. And if I can ever do anything to make it right, let me know. That's how I personally would handle it, depending on the situation. Or if they just say, well, I just wrote it off. Well, if they just wrote it off, then, then they're not thinking about it anymore. And if they bring it up again... You know, well, I told you I was sorry. I still am sorry for it, but, you know, I can't go back and change it. It's done. Um, I'd like to move on, put it behind us, you know, and it, that's on them. I mean, that's on, our job is to forgive and ask for forgiveness when we're, when we're in error, even if we don't understand what we've done wrong and we know somebody's offended with us. Uh, it's our job. You know, this is what I was trying to get through with my conversation as, you know, it's our job to go and, and, and try to make amends with the person. It's ruining your whole life, your relationships with family, other family members because of this. You know, so you can keep spiraling down if you want to, but you've got to forgive at some point. And telling somebody that you're not welcome, you know, um, is not really showing forgiveness. But, you know, anyway, so it's on them. Yes. Throw it out there, brother. <laughs> good morning, Miss yeah. Bonnie. It's good to have you with us. Oh, oh, okay. I thought you were saying go tell me something else. I was waiting for. Okay. Okay. establishment and there's it's their job to have the food ready and whatever it's my job to have the food ready and Friday I was already kind of not in a great mood and I went into his place and I stood there for close to 10 minutes just at the counter with like waiters and different people walking past me and they're all standing there waiting for me to go in there and I could see my order was there but I can't just like go back into their stuff and get it and I don't know if it's all there or not so I was kind of like waiting and waiting and waiting and finally this guy came up um, I guess pretty sure he was gay or whatever, but he came up and he looked at me and he quickly looked down and like starts messing with the cash register and I'm like, hello. <laughs> 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 yeah, I just need one thing. You don't have to seat me. I'm just here to pick up an order. So I quickly tell him that I'm here to pick up an order. He looks at me. Hi, how are you? And before he can even like get out his how are you, I was already like, I'm here for this order. Like, because I was done. Right. A long time. So he's like, oh, okay. So he hands it to me. Realize I snapped it, but as I was walking away, he was like saying, "Have a good day," and I'm like, "Yeah, you too." And like, I'm out the door. I'm rushing into my car, and I realized that like, I snatched it. I cut him off like twice. <laughs> I'm just like out the door. I'm like, I should go back and apologize. I'm like, yeah, I'm in a hurry. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna keep going, so I like hurry to my car. I get in my car. As I'm buckling up, I like look down. <laughs> so I'm here like, anyway, and then it's like, are you making me look bad now? And I, 
as I was leaving, I was literally thinking, like, I don't care. I'm never, I don't want to be that guy down here. Like, life is going to get better. Just keep doing what you're doing. And I'm one of those darn church people <laughs> who just has to be <laughs> service. <laughs> like, dang it. So I was like, okay, I'll go back in. I park and run back in. And I wait another five minutes for someone to come up because they're just, like, actively waiting to get in. But anyway, some, a girl comes up and I'm like, hey, guy helped me a minute ago. Can I, like, see him or talk to him or whatever? And stuff, and then I was out of right. there. Anyway, then she, like, went and found him, and I could, like, see he's standing around the corner, and she comes back, and she's like, what are you doing in there? I just want to talk to you. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> and he's, like, hiding behind the corner. <laughs> and finally comes out, and he's just, like, I think he's, like, 17. He's not very old. And he yeah. just came back around the corner, he's like, hey, I just wanted to apologize, because I was really rude to you, and just, it was really entertaining, because he just seemed, like, just out of shock, because I was probably feeling. <laughs> just like, <laughs> and I apologize, and then I felt like I'm about to cry because I'm like, I just like really made God look bad, and I just was really rude to you. And he's like, I mean, it wasn't that bad. And I'm like, wait, you didn't. I worked in food service. You about talked about me too. I was gonna say probably too late. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and it was, I was like glad I had done it, but I got back in my car and I was just like, I really. You don't often think about it, but, like, I'm representing God every day, even though that day I actually had, like, talk to my friends about it. So you're I really, really, <laughs> really um, like, representing. Yeah, I don't know. Like, you're giving people that impression, like, that's what a Christian is. Like, they are the great ones that are just, like, they don't eat chips or they <laughs> they're going to be oh. the nasty ones. <laughs> like, I don't know. Well, good. Well, I'm glad you got to go back in and speak uh, to him. So, um, you know, when you do that on the road with your driving, you know, some people have major road rage. Uh, I would just say, you know, road rage is a demon. Um, probably multiple demons in there, but um, if, if especially if you have a, you know, Jesus fish on your car or whatever. I mean, it just, you really give God a bad, you, you represent him poorly. And, you know, um, I would say take the fish off, but why don't you just go through deliverance <laughs> and, and and quit with the road rage, you know, because uh, the road rage doesn't turn out well for people sometimes. So, But anyway, uh, I am pa- way past time, so I'm going to close this out in prayer. If you have any more comments or we can keep talking afterwards, but um, we'll go to fellowship. There's some refreshments there. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for your love for us. And we just ask that as we go through this upcoming week, God, put people on our hearts that you need us to pray for. Put people on our hearts that you need us to speak to. And put, if there's anyone in our lives, Lord, anyone that we have unforgiveness toward or that holds unforgiveness towards us that we need to go and make it right. Um, Lord, your word says it's our responsibility, even if we know that they have something against us, um, that we go and, and make that right so that we can represent you, Lord. We thank you for, we just thank you for your, your mercy and grace. We thank you for your wisdom and discernment. God, we love you. We ask that you be with us as we um, enter into worship, God, that, that it may be pleasing to you. And, Lord, um, just allow um, the word to come forth um, after worship. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.